Hi there, I'm Joel, and I'm going to talk about 10 ways to fizz buzz. So the reason I'm talking about this is that I wrote a book called 10 Essays on Fizz Buzz, and I'm going to give you a taste of it. You may also know me as the guy who doesn't like notebooks, and who gave a JupyterCon talk about it, or maybe from my previous book, Data Science from Scratch, or maybe from a variety of other things. And so I assume that most of you are familiar with fizz buzz, but if you're not, it's the following problem. Print the numbers from 1 to 100 except that if the number is divisible by three, instead print fizz. If the number is divisible by five, instead print buzz. If the number is divisible by 15, instead print fizz buzz. So it's sometimes used as like a really basic litmus test uh, for coding interviews. What happened was a few years back, I wrote a blog post called Fizz Buzz and TensorFlow. Uh, it was the story of someone who was insulted at being asked fizz buzz in an interview and solved it as a deep learning problem. And this blog post was, you know, popular as far as blog posts go. And since then, I've been associated with FizzBuzz in the mind of the public. And sometimes people tweet at me to write books about it. And then I got quarantined. Uh, so I did. Uh, now that tweet uh, asked for 100 ways, 100 is a lot, but I was able to come up with 10. And I use each one as a basis for an essay about some aspect of coding or Python or mathematics or software engineering or design or computer science or so on. Uh, and, and so in this talk, I don't have enough time to go into the details. It's a very short talk. And also, you know, I'd like you to read the book. So I'll just introduce you to the 10 solutions and hopefully leave you wanting to know more. OK, and so was I able to come up with 10 solutions that are all interesting? I like to think so, uh, but you know you can judge. Uh, and so just to remind you again, the problem is to print the numbers from one to 100, except that if the number is divisible by three, print fizz, divisible by five, print buzz, and if it's divisible by 15, instead print fizz buzz. Uh, and so this is the first solution, 100 print statements. And, and so this is a solution. You know, In a lot of ways, it's not a good solution, um, but 100%, it solves the problem as stated. And if nothing else, it really shows your interviewer what's what, and you should never underestimate that as uh, you know a benefit. The second solution uses if and else, if and else, if and else, and this is sort of the canonical solution. It's probably what your interviewer will be expecting you to write, uh, but you know it's order sensitive. You have to get the conditions the right order, and it requires you to know the modulus operator, which some people uh, think is unfair. And anyway, if you know the modulus operator, maybe you appreciate that there's a deeper structure to the problem that maybe those first two solutions fail to take advantage of. Um, and so this cycle of 15 solution, uh, I like a lot because it starts to hint at that deeper structure. And this solution works, all the solutions work. Uh, these are all good solutions, uh, but I like this one. It, it captures you know, some of what's really going on. And maybe you prefer uh, number theory. If you prefer number theory, there's always Euclid's solution. Uh, this is this is one of my favorites, actually. I'll let you stare at it for a minute to see how elegant it is. Uh, it's probably not obvious how it works. Um, I know it's not obvious to me looking at it how it works, um, but if you go through it, it actually does work. And and if you sort of unpack it, it, it it's quite a beautiful solution. And you, maybe you thought that trigonometry would never be useful for anything, but here I've used trigonometry to solve uh, fizz buzz. You can see it uses math.cosine. Um, and of course, as a person of taste, instead of using math.pi, I use math.tau. Uh, I encourage you to make the switch as well, uh, read the manifesto uh, and so on. So this is a nice, uh, elegant trigonometric solution to fizz buzz, which you probably did not suspect admitted a trigonometric solution. This sixth solution involves uh, a big number. Uh, this one is definitely the most opaque of all the solutions. Um, and there's actually quite a bit going on here. Uh, but I promise you this works. And if you spend some time studying it, you can understand how it works and why it works. And it's, again, it's sort of interesting, uh, sort of not up to you. So this one is another of my favorites. In fact, this one might be my overall favorite. Uh, it's extremely elegant uses no numbers other than there's a one there and a hundred. Um, it uses no modulus operator, no checking for divisibility. It's pure iter tools. And I love iter tools. So, you know, stare at this uh, and bask in how elegant iter tools makes the solution to this problem. Uh, it's pretty great. Um, so yeah, this is probably my favorite. 
And then this one, you know, uh, is really surprising. I, I think everyone finds this one surprising. Um, this one I didn't entirely come up with myself. Um, I got the idea at least from Stack Overflow, but uh, the code is mine. And um, it uses random guessing to solve FISBA. So you can see that, you know, again, there's no modulus, uh, no divisibility. There's just this call to random not choice, which picks a random number or a random element uh, of these possible outputs. And surprisingly, this works. Uh, I encourage you to try it yourself if you don't believe me, uh, but I promise it works and it, it's pretty interesting why. Uh, so check it out. And then, you know, matrix multiplication is pretty popular these days. So if you're into NumPy, uh, here's a NumPy based solution that takes a weights matrix, multiplies it by uh, a vector, and uh, takes the argmax and uses that to solve it. So, so this, again, uh, maybe is a little bit surprising as to why it works, or, but if you go and, and start the code or read the book or, or work through it line by line, uh, hopefully you'll get it. Um, and then, you know, here's the one you've been waiting for, FizzBuzz and TensorFlow, although these days I actually work in PyTorch, hence the sick, because there's actually FizzBuzz and PyTorch. But, you know, here's how I would approach FizzBuzz as a deep learning problem. First, I define a data model to represent a FizzBuzz instance for training and prediction. It's got uh, a number, it's got some features, it's got a label, um, and it knows what class it should belong to. Uh, we write a helper function to evaluate a trained model so that we can make sure our model is, is at least somewhat good. And then we use binary digits as the feature vector. Um, it turns out that, again, I can't get into it in 10 minutes, but th there's some pretty interesting reasons why using binary digits uh, as a vector of features, which allows you to represent all numbers up to you know 1,023, uh, works reasonably well. Uh, and then to do good machine learning discipline, we train on the numbers from 101 up to 1023. And actually, I could have done 1024. And uh, you know we test on 1 to 100, which is what we wanted. Um, and then we've done good machine learning. And you know, here's just a training loop to train the model, and it sort of works. And the details of how it works are, again, pretty interesting. Um, and again, speak to a much deeper structure that this problem has um, that you might not you know, appreciate if you just look at it very casually and, and solve it using an if statement. So anyway, those are my 10 solutions to FizzBuzz. You know, if, uh, if I've made you curious, uh, you can get the book for cheap at it's fizzbuzzbook.com slash pydata. That's a coupon uh, for this conference. Or, you know, if you don't want to buy the book or read the book or anything, and you just want to see these solutions, they're all on GitHub uh, for free. You know, just go to github.com, Joel Gris Fizzbuzz, and you can find them there and play with them yourselves. You know, don't forget about Data Science from Scratch, the second edition, which came out in 2019, is very, very good. Um, find me on Twitter at Joel Gruss. Um, I'll tweet out these slides, and so you can find them there if you want to look at them. And, you know, finally, check out my rarely updated blog at uh, joelgruss.com. So thanks for uh, thanks for coming and thanks for listening and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. And, and I guess you can ask questions in the Q&A uh, for the rest of this time. So th thanks again and uh, take care.